Hi, this is John Henney. On today's mini lesson, I want to cover chest voice, which is the lowest register in which we sing. It's the, it's the bottom. And it's also where we speak. Uh, but surprisingly, even though this should be relatively easy, singers can have a number of problems in this area. So I want to cover some of these typical problems and how to solve them. Um, very often, chest voice is too breathy. People are trying to sing down there and they're just running out of air. Or they try and bring uh, too heady of a sound. Um, head voice is our upper register and we'll cover that in another module. But that sound is kind of like this, sort of the Aunt B from the Andy Griffith show. Ooh, and they're trying to hit notes down there. And what happens with, with both of these issues is the voice is generally weak. People find themselves running out of breath. They have no power. And so what we need to do is to really establish how to find chest voice. So I want you to go ahead, place your hand on your chest. And I want you to say, ah, as an apple, nice and strong, ah. And what you will do is you will feel sympathetic vibrations um, in the chest. And, and this is called chest voice. Now, what's really happening? is as the sound waves leave your vocal cords, which are right there behind uh, your larynx, which shows in a, as an Adam's apple in a man. But as the sound waves are created there, they pass through the throat area and then into the mouth area before they pass the lips and into space. So what is happening is the sound waves are bouncing off the surfaces of the throat and the mouth and they're becoming energized. And when you're in chest, there's more of that energy boost occurring in the throat. So this intensity of vibration creates a sympathetic vibration in the chest. And you can feel that. You can feel the chest vibrating. Now, we're obviously not singing out of our chest, but because as human beings, we, we process singing with our nervous system and the sensations, it's been commonly come to be known as chest voice. And so the name is stuck. So... As a general rule, wide or more open vowels will help find chest voice. And, and very simply, these are vowels where the, the mouth is more open, the mouth is wider. An A ah or an A ah is great for finding chest. And what you can do is you can go ahead, if you're having difficulty finding this and if it still feels breathy, go like you're reprimanding a small child that's, say, going to touch a hot stove, and I want you to say, Ah, ah, ah. And if you put it with that intensity, and remember, if it's breathy, ah, 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 well, the child's going to get burned. So you have to give, put some intensity behind that. Ah, ah, ah. That'll instantly get you into a chest voice coordination. Now, what we want to do with this sound is we want to apply it to a short staccato scale. All staccato means is that the notes are going to be separated. So you're going to restart on every one. And so it's going to give you a chance to really work that chord closure and that chest voice coordination. Make sure you don't get breathy on this. And also, don't take this too high. One of the biggest issues that singers have is that they take their chest voice and they try and take it up into the upper register. This is something called pulled chest voice and it creates all kinds of problems. So I certainly don't want you to do that. Okay, so let's take this scale on an ah. And we're just gonna say ah 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 and just take it up by half steps. If you find yourself getting breathy, you can make it a little bratty, you can stick out the tongue slightly. Ah 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 And again, the thing here to pay attention to is that chord closure, making sure it's not ah ah, but ah ah. Now the next thing we want to do is to apply this to a legato scale, which simply means the notes are going to be connected. And for this, we're going to use the word nay. Now that N is going to give us an extra little help in keeping the chords closed. It's like another resistor, which we'll need initially on this legato because you're not getting that chance to restart everything. So we'll take the same scale and we're just going to say nay, 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 nay. Again, if it wants to get breathy, if you're having trouble, make it a little bratty. Nay, 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 nay. Then 
once that's working okay, we'll go ahead and we'll start doing it without the consonant, without that little helper. So first we'll start with an A. This one can be a little ugly. A. Pattern. Just start moving up by half steps. Again, don't take it too high. We can then follow this with an ah sound. Now, ah, this vowel is actually going to sound a little less nasty. It's not quite as wide. This one may even cause you to become a little breathy. If it does, just go ahead and go back to the wider sounds, the nastier sounds. And when you're ready, come back to this one. See if you can make this work just as well. So we'll take this on the same scale. And just keep taking that up the scale and as long as it's comfortable. Once this starts to work, you should be pretty well coordinated in your chest voice and you should be ready to start making some small applications. So in the next lesson, what I'd like to do is to take you on some very short melodic fragments and start working melody and text so that we're not just stuck in scales, but we can actually begin to bridge the gap to application to song. So I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.